The following satellite transmission, copyrighted by the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, is available for live broadcast in 10 seconds or for taping and rebroadcast by any AM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is a WBN Worldwide Broadcasting Network production. This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. Some good friends of mine down in Southern California who have lived through the searing grass fires and urban riots, the cataclysmic Northridge earthquake and other social, seismic and spiritual shiftings of the fault lines have said to me that the good thing about it all was that it helped them put their priorities in order. When you look around you and see firearms and fist fights, carjackings and drive-by shootings, and much of the world fractured, flooded, falling and in flames, you do begin to ask yourself, what amid all of this is permanent, what is lasting, declared the master, a house built on the sand will collapse, and great will be the fall of it, but a house built on the rock will stand. Little of the material lasts in this world in its current form, only the inner fortress of faith, the citadel of the spirit, is absolutely unassailable. I recently wrote this poem. Everybody wants money, but I can't see why. They scratch and fight to get it until the day they die. But is it all worth it, I ask of you? God must not think too much of money. Just look who he gave it to. Declared the master, you shall not live by bread alone. And again he said, what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world but lose his own soul? It is only one short step from the limousine to the gutter. Today's peacock is tomorrow's feather duster. Every day the world turns over on somebody who is just standing on top of it. And again said the master, be not content to lay up your treasure on the earth where moth and rust corrupt, where thieves break through and steal. But lay up your treasure in heaven where moth and rust do not corrupt, where thieves do not break through and steal. For where your treasure is, he said, there will your heart be also. And if your treasure is spiritual, nobody can take it away from you. Because it is within you, it is part of you. What you own, you can lose. But what you learn is yours for life. And what you learn spiritually of spiritual truth is yours for your eternal life. It is literally yours forever. An Indian friend of mine here by the giant redwood trees of Northern California recently remarked that a wise man can learn from a wise man or from a fool. You can learn from a wise man to be wise and you can learn from a fool not to be a fool. The original Greek meaning of the word philosophy is the joining of the two words philo and sophia, or the love of wisdom, that's what it means, and the ultimate source of wisdom is God. The ancient Greek philosopher Plato declared that God is truth and light is his shadow, and the master declared, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. God is the first source and the center of all things and beings. God is the ultimate creator, controller. God is the infinite upholder of all reality, the stability of all statics, the dynamism of all change. And this living God, the creator of this universe, loves you. God has a will and wisdom for the living of your life. Treasure this truth that God knows you and God loves you and God has peace and power and purpose for your life. God can create in you a clean heart. God can renew a right spirit within you and can transform your life for all of time and for all of eternity. But the time to begin it is now. The time to learn how to swim is before the shipwreck. The time to learn to fly is before you take your first solo flight, making it up as you go along is not satisfactory. For anything really important, you need preparation. That is true in the material realm and it is true in the spiritual. Give your life daily to the living will of God and you will literally, literally be ready for anything. Even the most crushing of disappointments and heartaches. Benedict Arnold, one of the most famous traitors in all of human history, was unable to tolerate disappointment. In the year 1777, five younger men were promoted to positions above him in the Revolutionary Army, where he had himself been regarded as a loyal general. But Benedict Arnold began to brood and become bitter about what had happened to him. And three years later, in 1780, he turned traitor, and even the British, whose side he had joined, were scornful of him for what he had done. How do you meet your disappointments in your life? With hostility 
or with humility. It makes an immense difference. The man or woman who masters the tendency to brood and rebel and feel bitter and angry has won a mighty conquest. By turning to God for guidance, your disappointments will become mere preludes to victory. It is written, greater is he who rules himself than he who takes a city. The kingdom of God is within you. And you, in turn, as you live an inspired life, will inspire other people. One time there was a fire in a London hotel. The firemen flung their ladders together, went climbing up to the topmost story to rescue the people in peril. One after another was rescued by these brave firefighters. And all had been rescued, it seemed, but then suddenly one more face appeared silhouetted against one of the top windows with the flames in the background. So they wrapped a tarp around one of the firemen. And breasting the fierce flames, he went up again to that window, and he put this wet tarp around this little woman who was up there, and he started down. But they saw him begin to tremble as the fire was raging about him, and it seemed certain that he would fall with his precious burden in his arms. But then the fire chief suddenly turned to the crowd and to all the other firefighters and said, cheer him on, cheer him on. So they began to raise a great cheer from down there on the ground, cheer after cheer, urging him, inspiring, stimulating him, and his heart and his courage came back, and at last, exhausted but safe, he came down that ladder to the ground. Give your life to cheering good people on. Encourage them. Ponder this beautiful statement from Isaiah. They helped everyone his neighbor, and everyone said to his brother, Be of good courage. Be of good courage, said Jesus. Be of good cheer. Be not anxious. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Fear not. He said, I've come that my joy might be in you, and your joy might be complete and dare to share your spiritual faith with others who are in need. One time there was a man who was making his way over the mountains through a terrible snowstorm. And gradually he became weaker and weaker until at last he stumbled and he fell into a snowdrift. And he thought to himself, this is the end. I will never be found. He was too weak to rise up. But as he fell and rolled, his hand happened to touch the body of another man who had fallen in that same place earlier that same day during that same storm. This first man was unconscious lying there. The man who had just fallen struggled and rose to his knees and bending over the prostrate form of this first man began to chafe his hands and to rub his face until little by little by and by this man's eyes began to flutter and they opened and he had saved that man's life. But in so doing he had also saved his own life. For that exercise, that movement, that forced motion had kept the warmth in his own body as well. When you have a passion for reaching and helping other people, when you go seeking the lost, when you lift the burdens of others, your own vision then becomes clearer, your own hope of eternity stronger, your own certainty of spiritual things greater, your own strength and health and vitality spiritually are expanded and magnified by faith in God. You can meet any and all of your problems more resolutely and energetically. You may say, but I don't like problems. And yet problems pave the path to greatness. Great men and women are great men and women. They are indeed defined as being great men and women in relation to the immensity of the difficulties which they have overcome. Imagine, for example, a scene hundreds of years ago before the invention of the electric light. There's a family huddled in a small cottage in a medieval European village. It's dark. There's a rainstorm outside. Suddenly, the burned-up yellow tallow candle flickers in its puddle of wax and goes out. Without a moment's thought, one of the men picks up a burning twig from the fireplace and lights another candle. Easy problem. Easy solution. He will not, for that act, be remembered in the history books through the centuries. But Thomas Alva Edison saw that very same problem, the problem of darkness, of dark cottages on stormy nights. And Edison invented the electric light. And humanity will never, ever forget his name. Because great people are people who solve great problems. Learn to enjoy your problems. They are opportunities if you will encounter your problems in living faith. It is written, God is a very present help in time of trouble. You say, well, but I've made so many mistakes in my life. I've had so many perplexities, failures, futilities, frustration. I've so often done wrong. I've so seldom done right. Yet that is the human condition. 
and determined to press on regardless. Listen to these words by one of the most practical philosophers ever to write in the English language, Ralph Waldo Emerson. He wrote, finish every day and be done with it. You have done what you could. Some blunders and absurdities crept in. Forget them as soon as you can. Tomorrow is a new day. You shall begin it well and serenely and with too high a spirit to be encumbered with your old nonsense. End of quote. Words by Ralph Waldo Emerson. Turn it all over to God, your past, your present, and your future. Remember that regret is mildew. Stop pondering the past. There's no future in it. Live rather in the present moment. If you live with one foot in yesterday and one foot in tomorrow, you're going to end up sitting on today. Learn to live in the eternal now. To live in the present while obsessed by the past is like driving your car down the highway with your eyes fixed on the rear view mirror. Learn to focus on the future while relishing the reality of the present, the here and now. And fear not, you may not know what the future holds, but you can know who holds the future. The living God, your father and your friend who loves you and has a wonderful will for your present and for your future, for all your life, all your days, for here and now and for time and eternity. Consider this comparison. Ever since my teenage years, I've played the guitar. And in my guitar case, I carry a quartz crystal tuner set to the standard 440 pitch A note. Unless the entire classical orchestra is tuned to the same A note, the melodies, harmonies, and harmonics will be in discord. And the longer I play my guitar, the more it needs to be retuned. So it is with life itself. The more that you do, the more you think and work and plan and act, the more you need to pray and worship and get in tune. Because you can get out of tune. Your life becomes a cacophony of discord because you can rise no higher than your aspiration. Your attitude is what determines your altitude. Your outer life can be no better than your inner life. Listen to these words from the tombstone of a world-famous traveler. Cut in marble, these words. He was a man whom only the farthest beacon beckoned. That was the tribute paid to this daring navigator and explorer. He was a man whom only the farthest beacon beckoned. So may it be with you. May you be a man or woman to whom only the highest and noblest aspiration beckons. And that is to seek and find and do and carry out in your life the living will of the living God. Said the Master, be you therefore perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect. May that aspiration, that ideal, that quest surge in your soul beginning here and now, never ever to be extinguished in time and eternity, and you will live forever as the son or daughter of God you were born to be by faith. Write to us, will you? We want to hear from you at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. We're celebrating the 30th anniversary of this broadcast. Hope to do another 30 years of this broadcast. Then somebody else can take it over, and, and it'll go on decade after decade, century after century, proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance and the reality of it. This joyous truth, God is your perfect and loving spiritual father. You can experience this life-transforming truth through the decisions and actions of your personal faith. All the peoples of this planet are brothers and sisters in God's spiritual family. God has given an actual fragment of himself to live and dwell within each person. That God has a will which is the greatest possible good for your life. And if you choose to seek God's will, there lies before you an eternal adventure of striving to attain the supreme values of truth and beauty and goodness and living in love for God and love for others. The ultimate goal of existence is reaching for the very perfection of God. May the joy of that challenge stir and spiritually inspire you. Write to us, will you? The Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. For those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address. Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, OAK. H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. 
And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.